Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Arlington Board of Selectmen's meeting for September 12th. It's a little bit after 7.15, and I call our meeting to order. Uh, Mr. Greeley cannot be with us tonight. He's uh, traveling for business, and Mrs. Mahan can't be with us because she has just become a new repeat grandmother. So our congratulations to uh, Mrs. Mahan and her family. Uh, first item of business, RCN Cable License Renewal. Uh, Council Heim. Thank you, Mr. Dunn. What the board has before it is a um, renewal license for RCN that we hope to uh, gain your approval on tonight and your, your signatures. Uh, with us tonight are uh, Peter Epstein, our special counsel, who negotiates these licenses throughout the state on behalf of communities. Uh, Mr. Marr, uh, as whom, who all, you all know, but uh, also chairs our cable advisory committee. And uh, Tom Steele, a representative from RCN. Um, I'll turn it over to Mr. Marr and uh, Mr. Epstein to discuss the draft license in detail, but the pieces that I want uh, to communicate to the selectmen from my perspective as town council um, are that uh, this has been an efficient and effective negotiation. The uh, proposal uh, doesn't give Arlington absolutely everything that it could ever dream of, but it has been, uh, it is an extremely responsive uh, deal when considering our ascertainment process. Um, RCN is offering us things that, as the selectmen uh, likely recall from previous meetings, uh, Comcast in our negotiations absolutely refused to discuss or even, um, you know, consider. Um, so it's a, a good proposal for the town. I can understand that there might be lots of questions because it is a, um, it, it's something that we do, you know, somewhat irregularly, um, and um, it's a fairly detailed agreement. But with that, I'd like to turn it over to Mr. Marr, the chair of the Cable Advisory Committee. Welcome, Mr. Marr. Uh, thank you, Mr. Heim. Uh, gentlemen, uh, it's always nice to be here before you. Um, as Doug uh, indicated, we have uh, Tom Steele here, who is the executive vice president, former cable commissioner for the Commonwealth, by the way, uh, has been uh, in this area of business for a long time. Peter Epstein represents as uh, well, may not be known to you, but uh, very capable uh, counsel for us on, on cable-related uh, matters. Uh, represents, what, probably about 50 or 55 or 60 other communities, so uh, he's extremely capable and it was uh, very much uh, uh, beneficial to the town's consideration of this going forward. Uh, as uh, Doug indicated, uh, we think this is a very good license uh, that we're recommending, and I also should, should indicate that my colleagues on the Cable Advisory Committee met at 6 o'clock this evening. We had a thorough discussion of the aspects of it, and they unanimously recommended to the licensing authority that you adopt uh, the cable license. The uh, major provisions are a carrying forward of the 5% uh, of gross revenues of RCN, which is essentially mandated by uh, federal law, and that uh, entire amount in Arlington at least goes to fund uh, uh, local access ACMI. And by the way, we have Norm McLeod here tonight from ACMI who might uh, want to say a word if, if the board is inclined to hear him. Uh, the major provisions are, as I indicated, 5% for of the gross revenues. But uh, something that uh, RCN really stepped up to the plate on was an additional 2% of gross revenues for uh, capital outlay for uh, local access. Uh, as you can only imagine, I, I mean, I can only imagine, but the changing technology uh, uh, you know, is expensive, uh, and this 5% goes to you know, the operating expenses of cable access, uh, ACMI, but you know, they, they need additional capital outlays to keep, uh, to keep up to date with you know, whatever changes are apparent and obvious and necessary to provide community programming for the town. There is a, a modest senior uh, citizen discount of $5, but it's more than, uh, it's actually more than we've seen in other uh, licenses. Uh, one of the major aspects of it is RCN has agreed at great expense, really, uh, according to David Good, uh, my colleague on Cable Advisory, who was also Information Technology Officer for the town. Uh, the continuation of the INET, if he were to go out to a separate vendor, uh, this would uh, cost the town, you know, a very substantial amount of money, and I mean a very substantial. It could be as much as seven or eight hundred thousand dollars. So this is a value to the town that no, neither one of the other providers, uh, either Verizon or Comcast, offers. Uh, as you know, we continue to rely upon the internet, and 
uh, these kind of uh, things. This is extremely valuable. The town and RCN has uh, uh, agreed to carry it forward. Uh, one of the uh, items in the ascertainment process that we conducted uh, a year ago, uh, last March, was uh, ACMI's desire and, and separate discussions with ACMI that, we, that the manager and uh, Doug and I have had. Uh, they were very intent uh, interested in getting high definition on the three access channels, and RCN was willing to do that, and that's a major plus. Uh, in addition, uh, we were able to secure video on demand. So, for instance, if someone out there tonight is, is looking at the selectmen's meeting, uh, unless it's just rebroadcast, rebroadcast, you can actually go in now and choose to watch a particular selectmen's meeting. We were not successful in getting, Tom Steele is a, a fair negotiator, but he's also a tough negotiator. Uh, but he couldn't give us one of the things that we wanted, but it was one of the lesser things, and that is electronic uh, program guide. In other words, when you turn on your TV and you look at what's on TV tonight. But there are technical problems in providing that, so we, were, you know, we agreed not to, to push that in return for getting the video on demand and the high-definition channels. Um, just a brief word uh, uh, before we take some questions. Um, uh, you probably saw in your packets that RCN is being acquired by uh, an additional holding company. We're not really here tonight to talk too much about that. Uh, there is, if there is a request for a transfer of the license, there is a separate procedure that must be followed and it can take a, a period of time. So <coughs> we're glad to answer questions or I'll actually defer any questions to Tom on that issue, but I think the bottom line for everybody to understand is nothing's going to change uh, if it is acquired, and there is, a, as I say, a separate transfer mechanism under the statute that must be followed, and we would be back before you with regard to that. So um, I, I want to take my hat off to RCN, in particular Tom, for stepping up to the plate on these various matters. Uh, unfortunately, we haven't begun to engage uh, uh, Verizon because their license expires not until next year. But our, our negotiations with Comcast have been extremely difficult. And I'm not a sh in any way reticent to indicate that. Uh, we're hoping, obviously, that uh, having a benchmark now of RCNs uh, stepping up to the plate, in, in, uh, you know, on the, particularly on the capital, which is a very substantial uh, commitment by RCN, that we'll be able to persuade Comcast and eventually Verizon. So uh, I'm glad to respond, or uh, anybody here uh, can respond if I can. Yeah. So I'm inclined to get questions and then seek other input. Excellent. Uh, Joe. I, I have a few questions. I'll try to make them as quickly, quick as possible. Um, thank you very much for all your work on this. I, re I really appreciate it. I know it's not an easy thing to uh, take on. Um, and you answered actually a lot of my questions in your introductory remarks. I appreciate that too. Um, I, I uh, did have some questions about the uh, connections to, to some of the, the town buildings. So I, I did see a reference in here to the Gibbs connection, which we know we're going to need, but it looked like that's a town cost. Is, is that consistent with our past practice when we're bringing a, a new connection up? That the connection itself was at town cost, the work to, 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 to make I the connection. I am not in a position to be able to respond. Can I, either one of you gentlemen? Yeah. Peter Epstein. Oh. Good evening, gentlemen. Thank you. Um, glad to be here. Um, Mr. Kuro, are you talking about connections to public buildings or yes. new connections to the INET? Because there are two different uh, creatures. Um, as you know, um, RCN operates a fiber network in the town, right. and there is an exhibit that has all of those buildings that are connected. Um, uh, uh, for the most part, uh, my understanding is that Comcast does most of the connections to public buildings for basic service, yep. but we do have um, uh, an exhibit for RCN as well, and there will be an exhibit uh, for Verizon. Now that cost is uh, borne by the vendor, not the town. That's exhibit two, institutional network buildings? Well, ex institutional network are the buildings connected to this fiber network. Yep. Um, 
It's in um, Article 5, I believe, covers the drops to uh, public buildings. Those are different drops. One involves the subscriber network and its video programming. The INET is basically a closed circuit network for the use of the town. And as John mentioned, uh, it really does have great value for the, for the town. and such, yeah. Okay, great, thank you very much. Um, sorry. We use these electronic packets and I have to flip back and forth. <laughs> Hold on. Um, I think that's fine. Um, question for the manager. I noticed that web hosting is included in here. Do we use the, the, the web hosting that's provided or? No, or no? actually our, our new, uh, not new anymore, but our newer website, uh, we pay for hosting for that uh, as part of the package. So okay. not, it's not covered here. Okay, okay. Um, I had a question, um, well, just, I think just to clarify for, for folks who are, are watching at home, that this has been something we've had to remind folks of throughout this process. Um, there is a, a phrase within the contract that says the issuing authority reserves the right to regulate the licensee's rates and charges to the extent allowable under state and federal laws. My understanding is that is basically nil. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> Uh, in, in Massachusetts, Mr. Kerr, um, the state itself was the issuing authority for rates. Yeah. Now, in most other states, uh, it would be the town or the city, uh, but here, the Commonwealth basically exempted that. So, by and large, there no longer exists rate regulation. That is particularly true in a community that is subject to so-called effective competition, and there is an um, arcane definition of that yeah. um, um, from the FCC. But here in Arlington, you are fortunate. You have three cable TV companies. That's almost unheard of. Yeah. Now, there are some other communities around Needham and Newton that have the same, but it's very, very unusual. And so you don't really need rate regulation. The marketplace ostensibly does that for you. And people should realize that even if you had rate regulation, it only affects the basic service. Right. The, the expanded services, pay services, internet services, were never subject to this. And if you look at the number of subscribers in any community that subscribe to basic only, it's very small. Right. It's very right. small. But that is not, I, it, it, the language was there in case it came back. It's not coming back and you were, you were right to bring it up so folks understand that the Board of Selectmen cannot control uh, Comcast rates, RCN's rates, or Verizon's yeah. rates. But to that, I would like to say that I'm appreciative that you were able to negotiate the senior discount, which we had asked for. I recognize yes. that we cannot actually. And I think John was that. accurate in saying that it it is in the scheme of things a very generous. I mean, five bucks is is a generous discount. RCN agreed to put it in the license. Uh, Comcast would not agree to a discount. They, they would never agree to put it in the license. And Verizon historically has just not agreed. So in your current Verizon license, uh, there is no senior discount, nor is there a senior discount in your Comcast license. Okay, thanks. I just have three quick questions. Keep quick going. Ones. Section 10.3, yes. um, and there are several other sections which, which reference um, uh, their non-discrimination clauses, yes. and they reference state and federal laws. Um, our lists of protected classes are actually much broader in in um, in Arlington, okay. and uh, I'm just curious why we wouldn't uh, reference also the local local bylaws as well. Okay. For example, we we include veteran uh, status, source of income, um, gender identity. Th that's a valid concern for sure, and. Because you mentioned it to me before the meeting, I engaged Tom yep. Steele about it. Uh, and I think, you know, if you wanted to agree to the license contingent upon a successful negotiation to include the additional protected classes, which are recognized by the town, Tom has indicated he's willing to do that okay. and include that. So if you want to include that as part of your uh, vote, I'm sure we could, you know, come to a res happy resolution to satisfy the board with regard to that. But can I just answer? Uh, is, is, no, is do, your do concern you, that, I'm sorry, 
that the, I don't have the language right in front of me, that it references applicable state and federal laws. If we simply put applicable local, state, and federal. I think would, that would satisfy So, it. I mean, yeah. the fact is we can even write that in on the draft we have, yeah. and I'll change it, and I'll just add the word local, and then whatever your uh, local uh, bylaws are would, would, would then be uh, triggered. I, I think that would satisfy okay. it. I think there are several places where there are okay. such clauses in the mm -hmm. okay. contract. That's great. Um, section 12.2, uh, I, I just have a question that there are some performance standards laid out, and there's one performance standard around, I don't know, it's 3% or 5% of the callers to the call center won't get a busy signal. I'm okay. just curious, how is that measured? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is the telephone answering, and it is in the customer service obligations where it talks about uh, people getting through 95% yeah. uh, of the time. Uh, it, it references federal law. It's not something that yeah. we negotiate. Um, the, the way that, and this, the customer service obligations are probably 20 years old. I mean, they're, they're in there. They were promulgated by the FCC, which should tell you something. Okay. So if you call the FCC and ask them what it means, you get silence on the other end. But the way to, uh, there is a remedy there, sir, and it's a, a busy study. So you could actually commission Verizon to do a busy study. I don't know that anybody has done so, uh, but, but, but there is, at least on paper, Mr. Kura, uh, a remedy. Okay, that just left me scratching my head a little yeah, bit. Well, I, I always <laughs> scratch my head about FCC uh, yeah. procedures. And just the last one is uh, Section 12.9 talked about um, employees when they come to the home okay. having proper identification. Yes. And I noticed there was no reference to contractors. I don't know if you use contracted uh, folks. Who, who come or if they're considered legally employees. For I thought purpose. it did reference agents. Um. Yeah, if, if you don't mind, if you could come on up to the microphone to answer a question, I'd sure. appreciate it. And as we say, the millions at home who are watching, they appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you. If you could introduce yourself. Thank you. Yes, uh, my name is uh, Thomas Steele, Jr. I'm yeah. Vice President and Regulatory Counsel for RCN. Welcome. Thank you. And uh, right down the street, we have our regional office here in Arlington. We're very <laughs> Happy to be here. We're proud to be part of this community. That's why we're so anxious to see this agreement reached. And uh, so, uh, <coughs> the, if anybody were to come and solicit, they would have to be, have identification. There's police rules. There's all kinds of things that we follow. Yep. Contractors the same way. If we hire contractors as technicians, for instance, yep. everybody's clearly identified with name tags. Yeah, we have a welcome kits. The whole the whole thing. Okay, great. Thank, Thank you. you. That's all I had. Thank you very much. You don't have to apologize, Joe. You're doing <laughs> Steve. Um, you know, I, I don't have any questions. I think Joe hit on a, a lot of question marks I had. Uh, I think John did an excellent job uh, describing the contract. I, I am very grateful for uh, the work of the Cable Advisory Committee. And in particular, um, I'm happy to hear that they voted on this unanimously. And I think that shows that the town is getting a, a, a really good product. Um, and after our um, initial hearing, which well, feels like a, maybe a, a year ago, is that be about right, John? Yes. That, um, I think it was the three of us. Was I think fact. it was, <laughs> yes. Um, I, I know there was uh, quite a lot of attention paid to MCI, uh, a CMI at that hearing, and um, it sounds like they were uh, really taken care of, and I think that benefits the whole town. It shows uh, that RCN takes our relationship with ACMI as seriously as we do. So thank you very much. Did you want to hear from Mr. McLeod briefly? Or? He was next on the list, for sure. Sorry, I almost missed my opportunity to speak with you because I was busy texting Sean downstairs and Jeff to make sure that they knew what was going on <laughs> and make sure that the sound over here is increased a little bit because I had difficulty hearing people speaking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, I'm Norm McLeod, I'm the Executive Director for Arlington Community Media. I want to thank everybody who has been involved in the in negotiations, certainly the Cable Advisory Committee, Doug Heim, our town manager, and of course, RCN. I want to compliment RCN. In the access community around this area, uh, RCN has a very good reputation, partly because everyone is excited about getting high definition. High definition television is critical to get for us to have people watch us, and more importantly, for people to watch you. 
There are about 30 to 40 percent of the people that who have done, when we done surveys, and the town did a survey two years ago, if you remember, uh, and about 30 to 40 percent of folks said they would not watch if it was not in high definition. That, and that, that was two years ago. So I'm sure that percentage is, has increased over two years. So the fact that RCN has been so cooperative in giving us three channels, we're ecstatic because we can provide more programming for the community and have more people watching us so we can see high school events. Uh, we can see football. We can see the middle school. We can see uh, all of you folks, certainly, and more importantly, Town Day is coming up in two days. It will all be in high definition. The irony is we are really high definition ready now. All we were waiting for is the channel, the pipe out. Well, thanks to RCN, we have it. So I just want to thank everybody for, for working on this. And again, RCN and everybody, we're happy, very happy. Mm. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Good to hear from it. Is there anyone else here who wanted to talk about this license? Mr. Dunn? Oh, yes. Uh, Mr. Steele, did you have anything else you wanted to say? Oh, on oh, behalf of RCN? No, I just want to say it's, uh, it was a pleasure negotiating with, uh, I think, John, we were here for the first license and the second and everything. It's been, uh, it's been a pleasure working with that committee. It was, uh, and I think that uh, we're particularly proud of providing HD services for the, in, in programming. I know the only equipment you can buy these days is HD equipment. And so everybody was ready. We have the bandwidth. We're small. We're not as big as Comcast and Verizon, but we seem to be able to do some things they can't. Uh, and one good element, and not that I'm looking at any particular one of you, but HD tends to be more slimming. <laughs> <laughs> but if you spill soup on your tie at dinner, then you're in trouble, right? <laughs> That's the other thing. You might need some makeup. Yeah. But, uh, and we have 250 miles of fiber in the institutional network, serving 26 buildings, interconnected point to point. It's, it's a huge amount of fiber uh, in, the, in the town, and it, it's reliable because it's part of our own network. It's good for data, good for video distribution, and we're proud to be a partner with the town in that regard. So uh, it's all said and done. We're anxious to get this license signed, be here another 10 years before we come back. And <laughs> um, the transfer that was mentioned by uh, John briefly will be something that we'll ask you to address over the next month or two. Uh, it's, it involves an investment company really uh, buying out the investment company that owns us now. The, the promise is there that the management team will remain the same, including me, which I'm happy to hear. <laughs> uh, and so it'll be, you'll see very little change other than the ownership at the top will be a different company and they'll, they'll prove to you with the federal filings and the hearing that we might have that they have the, cap the capability to provide the services and they'll have to honor the license that you signed tonight. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Mr. Mayor. Uh, if there are no other questions, comments, uh, I w oh, I, please. Joe, nope. oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, I would respectfully request that a whoops, excuse me a motion uh, be made to execute the extension license extension for RCN uh, to be effective today, uh, and that you sign same. Done. And may I just add, as modified uh, uh, ever so slightly by uh, Mr. Kuro's uh, request to insert. Uh, we will read state, um, federal, and town regulations with respect to non-discrimination. So moved. Second. All right, so we have a motion to second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 I'm going to hand you the signature page. If you could sign it and give it back, we'll read at your convenience. Sounds good. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you all very much. John, thank you. Thank your committee. Uh, uh, it's, it's really uh, Doug and, and Adam are running the, are driving the car here. I'm like a, the junior member of the of this the, of this team, and I'm going to remind you of that when we come back with Verizon and Comcast, but maybe not so great a license. So, we'll All see. Right. <laughs> John, we're going to help your negotiating position. Thank you, Mr. Marr. We won't. Oh. Yeah. Uh, okay. If you could sign all, 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 all copies, oh. 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 I was going to need them back. I'll sign them and send yep. them back to you. All right, next up, uh, Arlington Heights Banners. Mr. Chaplain. Thank you, Chairman Dunn. Uh, I really only put my name here to be able to introduce the representatives of Support Arlington Heights that uh, were able to make it tonight. So I see we have Claudine and Debbie, and I'll let them introduce themselves. But uh, quickly, as the board knows, we've been working with uh, a citizen group, a resident group uh, named Support Arlington Heights to make a number of 
improvements and to have a number of discussions about Arlington Heights. And part of that was uh, designing banners as they've done, and they're here tonight to, uh, to talk about them. Thank Sorry. you. Sorry. No, it's good. That's We're ready? Welcome. Hi. Yes. Hello. Hello. Uh, my name is Deborah Richard. I live on Hillside Avenue in Arlington. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, as Adam said, we represent a citizens group in the Heights, and we have gathered together uh, to improve and also bring along some of the businesses for the prosperity for the citizens up in that part of town. One of the bigger things that we have done is beautification as well as a group meeting that had over 100 members. I know Mr. Cario was there as well. That was in July. And one of the items that we've decided to act on is to create banners that we would hang up and down the existing poles in the corridor of the Arlington Heights Mass Ave Street. We have a design that's in your proposal, I assume, for uh, 14 banners that will be hung on the streets. They're triangular shaped, and we were just respectfully submitting for your approval. Cool. Thank you. Questions? Um, no questions. I will move approval, and um, I think these look excellent. Great. And, Thank um, you, Mr. Byrne. You know, I think that what we've uh, we've definitely seen this done in East Arlington. I think this has been a um, you know a one good step uh, moving forward. So I'm excited to get this going up the heights. We are too. Great. And I will second the motion. I'll say I, I really I like the de the design. I, I think it's uh, it's interesting. You're 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 going away from the rectangular design that we usually see for banners, which is kind of uh, distinctive and and uh, using one of our more distinctive uh, architectural gems from the Great. heights. Yeah. I love it. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Great. Thank Thanks you very so much. much. Thank you for coming. All right, next up I'm going to do the consent agenda. We have the minutes for July 18th. Do we have the right three people for that? I forgot to double no. check that. We um, don't. I am going to abstain for the okay, August so we, 22nd meeting. So we're going to table. All right, so, I'm, so we are not going to include the minutes for either the 18th or the 22nd. Um, <clears throat> Request special one day beer and wine license 922 Robbins Memorial Town Hall for the art exhibit. Martine Gugol of Gugol of Vision 2020 Reservoir Art Committee. One day alcohol, all alcohol license on September 25th at the Whittemore Robbins for private wedding. Uh, we have a request for Hero Fest mm -hmm. September 30th through October 1st uh, from, Dr., from Reverend Dr. Nicholas Cast Castanas. I may regret that or, or saying that or not. Um, for approval, Arlington Center for the Arts, 17th Annual Open, uh, excuse me, Arlington Center for the Arts, 17th Annual Arlington Open Studios, uh, a Kino monitor on, at Boyle's Family Market on 64 Broadway, and a special municipal employee for the recreation department. Uh, we also, who is James Feeney, uh, or excuse me, the request is from James Feeney. And we have several new election workers to point, Donald Cohn, Linda Cohn, Claire Gibbons, Melissa O'Brien, Paula Silva, uh, Thomas Silva, Aaron Sloanacre, and Jeffrey Wright. <coughs> uh, Marie, just uh, the, we pulled uh, the minutes because we don't have the right three, so ne none of the minutes are on the, this, this list. So we have got a whole bunch of items, and do I have a motion, and who's here to talk about these items? I move a portable subject to all conditions to set forth. Perfect. Joe wins. Second. got a second from Mr. Byrne. Who's here to talk about these items? Right up front. Come on up to the mic, introduce yourself. So Nicholas Croquettos from St. Athanasius Greek Orthodox Church, 4 Appleton Street. Welcome. So the one and only. So, Yiddo Fest. Um, this year the church has decided to seek a fundraiser to renovate our existing building at 22 Appleton Street. And Yiddo Fest will be focusing all of its funding towards that building and that project. So, I entertain any questions you might have about Yiddo Fest. What is it? It's the first time we've ever done it. So... We're very excited about it. I'm sure a lot of people <laughs> will be. I'm sure a lot of people won't be. Yeah. Can't please everybody. Yeah. But do you have any questions for me? Uh, so is, it the, is the package of requests that you've got there, does it differ from what you do for uh, the Greek festival? It looked the yes. same. Oh, it does. Okay. It does. And I, I'm glad you asked that. Um, so as you know, the Greek festival is, is quite a large scale event. This is not going to be that. It's our first time having Yudo Fest. I included in the packet um, a request to change Appleton Place to the one way just for safety reasons. Um, we, we thought we would do that in advance. 
to just try to mitigate any issues that may arise, but we don't foresee any because this is a very much scaled back event. We actually don't know what to anticipate, and to be quite honest, we don't anticipate probably very much um, due to a lot of outstanding factors. One, it's the first time we've done it, so we need to see how it goes, and secondly, it's a different time of year, it's the fall, and thirdly, we're only offering one thing on that menu, which is gyro, which a lot of people don't like, but some do like. I don't know if any, I know Mr. Kuro has <laughs> come to our festival, and I have seen Mr. Burns, so uh, it is, it's a, it is a, a different style event. We'll have pastries. Um, we're requesting the one-day beer and uh, two-day beer and wine license. Uh, there'll be sodas, beverages available, typically what you'll see, what we typically offer at our ladies' cuisine uh, in the fall, which we're not having this year. Other questions on that one? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Officer Rateau. Good evening, members of the board. Officer Rateau from Arlington Police Department. Uh, some of you may know, but I am the traffic safety officer, but in my division, we are details, traffic, and licensing. Uh, we do have some concerns about the proposal as set forth for the Greek church. Uh, while we it's not, we're not denying that uh, you know, it should happen. We're just concerned that uh, in their safety and security plan that they're asking to have traffic redirected uh, on Acton and, I mean, sorry, Appleton Street. And with that, they're only asking for two officers during the entire time. And we're concerned about that with it being such an unknown. Uh, it's still gonna be outside. I believe this similar event kind of might have been a lot smaller happening indoors but now they're doing something more expanded outdoors with a tent want to redirect traffic so we're concerned about only asking to have two officers there with a traffic redirection and you know as you said too some people may not be happy about it we don't know how much uh word got out to the community because we do get a lot of pushback when they have the larger greek festival uh in earlier in the year just wondering you know how much publicity was gone out, or if this is gonna be thrust on the neighborhood all of a sudden seeing another festival coming in. So those are our concerns about it. It's not that we'll deny signing off on it, but those are our major concerns with the proposal. Okay. Is there a question? Yeah. Um, how many officers would you propose using? Uh, speaking with my supervisor, Lieutenant Conroy, three plus a supervisor. Okay. That's if they wanna have traffic redirected that there should be at least three officers and a supervisor watching over them. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, so I'm, I'm curious, so I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm quite confident that you guys have talked about this before, and so you, have you thought about running it without changing the street, but you still made the request? Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Absolutely, so I did that as a preliminary, you know, discussion with the Board of Directors of St. Athanasius to provide better safety. I don't know if any of you have ever been, I mean, I'm sure a lot of you have been up in the Heights during the Audison drop-off and pickup. Uh, I don't think I need to say very much more. I think we would, <laughs> I think doing just a two-day to change the street path to a one-way is something that we'd appreciate all year long, and I know the residents would probably appreciate that too because that's a very narrow street. I, I haven't spoken with Officer Rateau prior to this meeting, um, so these are all new facts being presented to me, but um, I, I am if, if it's something that the town is uncomfortable with with changing the uh, directional pattern I'm happy to drop that request uh, and we can keep the pattern as as nor uh, the normal pattern it is it, That's entirely up to the town so. and, and I just want to add too, Guido Fest is not in replace of any other event. Uh, it is a new event and <clears throat> It, because it's so scaled back, we are anticipating a, a very much lighter crowd too. I mean, we're not ordering anything that you'd see for the Greek festival. It's, it's not a Greek festival. It's more of a indoor event as well because we're anticipating colder weather, so the church hall will be open for seating. We'll have some seating under the tent, which will be a third of what it normally is. Um, we really just have that tent to provide um, greater access for those that are handicapped and also to provide um, outdoor seating to those that just want to grab and go. We're anticipating sort of a you know, takeout pre-order process. We're trying to do that electronically online. So we're just trying to stay ahead of the curve to satisfy as many people as we can. Joe. 
So um, I, I think I have a question for Officer Rateau. Am I understanding that if there is no uh, change in the traffic pattern that, that the two officers that are requested here would be sufficient? That was what was relayed to me by my supervisor. Yeah. Okay. I think there is a valid concern here where the Friday is, is it's 11 o'clock, I think, it, it is, is this the opening time. So it does conflict with Audison. Uh, Correct. It's up. a 11 a.m. Yeah. start time. Yeah. Although, as you'll note, probably when you're at our festival and we do start the 11 a.m. time, we have contemplated year after year whether or not to start at five o'clock because yeah. the the turnout is so low. Yeah. It's not mm -hmm. like it used to be across the street because we'd have people from the town halls, uh, teachers from the the high school walk over. We're in a different spot now, so we've been contemplating whether to change that, but. I yeah. just, with, um, with added details, as you know, for our festival, we, we spend about $9,500 in details. Yeah. So we're trying, we want to be careful because it's the first year and not go overboard, but we're respectful of whatever the board decides and what whatever's recommended to us. Yeah, I think as, as I think about it, I mean, if, it's not even the volume that I'd be concerned with, but as I think about it more, <coughs> changing the, the directional flow of that street to conflict with the, the, the Audison drop off and pick up. That's where the confusion could could come. I think with some of those those parents. So, if I'm hearing from you correctly, you're, you're willing to drop the request for the for changing the the um, the directional flow of the street and correct. That's just correct. keep it at two detail officers. Then I, I'd be inclined to um, amend my motion to that effect. To amend, amend yeah. so uh, Joe's making a amended proposal to accept the to approve. With the a line through the um, the street the street, the street change, direction. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so. Second for Mr. Byrne, um, and I'm comfortable with that as well. Officer Rateau? Uh Yes. Uh, for, and it's not like sorry. It's not like we were trying to drop this on last minute. It just was as they understood that I was going to be here on a separate issue tonight. They said to make sure that I brought up that concern. Okay. So, and that was the only concern. Everything else in the safety and security plan that they submitted uh, was fine. Okay. okay. Anybody else on anything on the consent agenda? Anybody from the Center for the Arts want us to talk about their employee? Nothing? Okay. So we have a motion amended with an amendment that, um, and which we're, I'm just going to take the amendment because we're, we're already there. Uh, all those in favor of the main motion to, on the consent agenda, please say aye. 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 Uh, unanimous vote. All right, we are now, I'm going to now ch pull something out from deep on our list. And I'm gonna go down to item number 16, which is for approval, designated Purcell Road is one way from Everett Street to North Union Street. Uh, since we have uh, the pleasure of Dr. Bodie being with us, uh, you're up. <laughs> uh, do you, uh, are you the right person to speak first? It's your request, so it probably makes sense. Well, Officer Rateau is with me. You, great. Well, thank you for, um moving me up on the agenda. And thank you for having me here tonight. The reason that um, I have, uh, I'm here is related to the letter that I sent all of you. Um, we would like to request that Purcell, which is a one, which right now is two <clears throat> ways, and it is the one way, it is the one block street that is adjacent to the Thompson parking lot, be made one way going east. And the reason for this request is that right, even right now under the current uh, situation, um, this street is jammed in the morning. And we, right now teachers park along the school side and when people park along the opposite side, it is a two-way street and it's impossible for two-way traffic. Um, we anticipate, or at least hoping to anticipate, that uh, we will be looking at um, some construction in the near future at Thompson. And if that occurs, that's only going to exacerbate an already current situation that's very difficult. And Officer Roteau and I, he's right there, <laughs> have talked about this a number of times. And I think that uh, he could give a little bit more information about what some of the, um, the, the current dangers are in the in the situation um, one other one other thing that I would say is that we did contact all of the abutters so they are aware that tonight we're presenting this and asking you for a decision I, I don't know if any of the abutters are here this evening uh, but they may they may have some comments on that as well 
Can I just turn this over to Officer Rateau? Definitely. I just, uh, uh, yes, please. Oh, do you have uh, a question? I'll, I'll, no, let, I should, please, Doctor uh, Officer Rateau. Um, thank you. Uh, as stated, I've been working with Dr. Bodie on this uh, for a while, trying to uh, brainstorm ways of making the area around the Thompson School a lot safer. Mm -hmm. As you know, it's like one of our greatest responsibilities is to make sure that we get our town's children to and from school safely. Uh, this intersection uh, where you have North Union and Purcell and on the opposite side you have Fremont um, has constantly <clears throat> been a complaint area. Uh, we do have a traffic supervisor there assisting with kids crossing, but one of the problems is that the intersection is offset uh, with <coughs> Fremont. And so then that way you have cars coming uh, offset different areas, trying to turn, trying to come out, and it makes it a lot more dangerous. We even had uh, one of our traffic supervisors has been was hit uh, earlier um, this year. I'm sorry, well, earlier this year, the previous school year, uh, at that intersection by a car. So we're just trying to look at a way. I believe that if we make it a one way heading eastbound, and we did pick heading eastbound just because after the uh, previous construction at the Thompson, the way that the uh, parking area was set up along with the uh, driveway. Uh, it's more oriented to eastbound traffic. And like Dr. Bodie said, uh, she did send a letter out to the abutters. There's six abutters on the street. I did get an email back from one person just wondering if it would be something that we'd try and do only time-wise, you know, maybe morning and drop off. I, felt, I feel that this is something that should be a permanent change to a one-way. A lot easier trying to mitigate it than having someone trying to rush through the sign or anything like that or confusion, frustration, especially when there's a lot of kids going around. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Questions from colleagues? Um, no, no questions, but I, I will say that um, looking at the map, the, that street doesn't go all the way through. It is just the block of Thompson, because I had right. to look that up first, so no, it's not like it runs um, you know, any more than the one block. So, so I will support it for that reason, and it does seem to be a, a big safety issue, so I'm happy to support it. And I'll just say we have plenty of precedent, I think, at some of our other schools, I can think of Stratton up near Audison, of making portions of streets one way in the vicinity of the schools to, to facilitate the flow, so I think, I think okay. it's reasonable. So I, I'll move, move approval. Okay. Yeah, second. Second, okay. Um, Dr. Bodie, did you I, we, uh, did you get any feedback? Other than this one email, no, that oh, was did. it. And Officer Rateau answered it. Okay. Uh, is there anyone here who's here to talk about uh, Purcell Road? Okay. Um, how, Dr. Bodie, um, when do you anticipate that the construction is complete? Is it, so we're talking about, complete. so what you, sorry, in your letter you, you indicated you would like this to take effect in particular, you wanted it before the construction started yes well we have some steps to go before that as you know we have to go to the school enrollment task yep. force and then permit and then uh, the special town meeting um, if if approvals go forward um, we would anticipate construction beginning November 1st and when would it end just I, I understand this is uh, this is not this is the opening we're of speculating school. it's not certain yeah well I hope it's certain it's <laughs> the opening of school next year okay so my question then is, should we consider reevaluating this next summer and see how it worked for this year? So we have a couple options. So we, I, I should say, I'm happy to support this in particular for dur during the construction. Um, uh, there are a few other traffic changes we've made where we've done, we've called the pilot programs, we've done them for six months or a year or something like mm -hmm. that. Is this something that we would want to make truly permanent or is this something that we want to explicitly call back before ourselves next summer? Um, Steve. So I would, I would be happy to consider that, but I'd be interested to see how, what type of valuation tools we're point. going to look at in the interim. That's a fair it, point. Um, I, perhaps if it's just feedback, and, and I'd, I'd be happy to reconsider it if uh, some of the neighbors wanted to get together um, and come and discuss it with us. But I, um, without actually having a way to yeah, consider it over the past year, I don't think that I'd be willing to call it a pilot program for now. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> may, may I make a point? Yes. One, assuming that we do have the completion of uh, opening a school, there's going to be a six-room classroom uh, building on the other end of Thompson. I would, I would, if you're going to consider it, I would wait until we see how 
how traffic um, patterns after this new addition, particularly where drop-offs are. We, you know, we've seen some surprises that we didn't anticipate with Thompson, uh, one of which is that more people are walking down the loading dock um, hmm. driveway than we expected to happen. So it's, it's hard to say exactly what this will look like, I mean, as much as we might anticipate what traffic is going to be in that area. Okay. But we are going to be seeing more cars coming to that school and more walking traffic. And right now, that corner of North Union and Purcell is probably one of the most dangerous corners that we have among all of our schools. Okay. Any further discussion? Uh, Dr. Officer Toe. Uh, also, to add to that, in terms of like considering a pilot program, I mean, the Thompson has been redone for a couple of years, and this has been an existing problem since it's been redone. And I think it's something that, you know, we need to do something to address it. I'm not sure if trying to do a pilot on it for a year when we've been having problems at this intersection for two years already is uh, I, just my opinion. I think the one way to take out that offset and the turning back and forth in there is probably the safest solution. Okay. It didn't make the motion, so you're all safe. Okay. <laughs> Uh, any further discussion? A motion from Mr. Kuro, second by Mr. Byrne. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Three zero unanimous vote. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Next up, item number 11, um, Board of Health, Dr. Fallon. He's here. He is here. Welcome. So, uh, Thank you very much for volunteering. Thank you for being here tonight. Uh, if you could <coughs> share with us a little bit of, we've got your um, resume in front of us, but at the same time, if you could share with us and the people at home something about your experience and what brings you here and for this, or actually, or should I have called on Mr. Chapter Lane? Or? Well, you know, I would actually love to just give a 10 second. Um, Dr. Fallon uh, came in with a recommendation of after being interviewed by uh, Christine Bongiorno, and really, uh, we are blessed in Arlington with so many talented and experienced and, and, and very intelligent uh, and um, just excellent volunteers. And Dr. Fallon came in and just really blew my socks off with his expertise and the experience he has. And I think he is going to be a great addition to the Board of Health. So I'll let him talk more about himself, but highly, highly recommend. So now maybe you shouldn't say anything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chapelain. Uh, so no, my name is Kevin Fallon, and I'm a, a resident of Arlington for more than uh, 66 years. And um, I have a business, a local business. Um, I've been uh, through veterinarian school, and in veterinarian school we do do a lot of um, public health work um, studies, a lot of it theoretical, but I also was able to experience some work with um, APHIS, which is the Animal Health Plant Inspection Service, and I um, also had um, large animal and small animal health experience. The other thing we do in school is we have a lot of food inspection and um, meat inspection uh, in, um, training. And I just uh, thought that um, I could help out. I, I can see from reading the minutes from the last couple of sessions that I have a lot to learn. But um, I'm sure working with this uh, team will be, uh, they'll help me along as, as much as I can help them. Okay. Thank you, Thank you very much. Yeah. Steve. Um, I will, I'm happy to move approval, Dr. Fallon. I, and I think, uh, I know that the other committee members will enjoy your uh, partnership on the committee. So thank All you. Right. Thank you very much. And I'm, I'm happy to second, second that, you, <laughs> that approval. I knew you were a, a, a local guy, but I didn't know you had done so much globe trotting in your career as well. Yeah, I was just lucky. You know, my wife's from Australia, and so that was a big part of it. Yeah, yeah, the, I see. The Royal Bangkok Sports Club Polo, Polo Club. Polo Club, yeah. that's fantastic. But I also see the Animal and Plant Health Inspection Service so, certainly sounds very uh, uh, relevant to, to the yeah. work that you've been doing with the, the yeah. Board of Health there, so. Cool. So, so uh, thank you very much. Volunteers right. make the town work, and we really appreciate your willingness to volunteer. My pleasure. And um, I will be happy to support it. I will bend your ear, however, briefly on an issue that, uh, where I've cho had the opportunity to disagree with decisions the Board of Health has made. And uh, specifically, the one that I'm uh, concerned me was the changing of <coughs> the sale of tobacco products from 18 to 21 which I understand the health benefits of it, but if, I think it's, uh, I'm a big believer in um, the, 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 the equality of citizens 
And I think that the, that is a type form of age discrimination that is just, a, I think that people should be treated like adults. And so having uh, bent your ear, I'm okay. still going to say, uh, well, the other thing we, I, I do believe in is this one of those things where you, uh, you appoint smart people and you let them make their own decisions. But you also tell them what you think. And so <laughs> I have done that. All right, thank um, you. Is there any further discussion? No. All right, and on approval, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 And so, for some reason, my phone thinks that I'm talking to it, which I apologize for. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, right. Dr. Paul. Thank you, Dr. Paul. I've never had that happen before. Uh, next up, uh, Council on Aging. Not, uh, sorry. So uh, Mr. Fenton actually emailed me uh, today. He was away last week and unfortunately sustained an injury that will prevent him from being here tonight. He definitely wants to come before the board. If the board would do as it's allowed in the past, maybe approve his appointment so we can start sitting on the CUA, but have him back at a future meeting. Uh, I'd ask you to consider that. So moved. Second. Okay. Uh, since you asked, Mr. Manager. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Any discussion on this one? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Uh, item 13, request class two license, Patrick Quinn. <laughs> Welcome. Hello. Um, I, we read your application. Anything you should want to share? No, my biggest the reason I asked for a class two is I sell a lot of cows through the internet. They never come to Arlington. Mm -hmm. And the Department of Revenue is mad at me for selling a few cows. <laughs> okay. So I need to become licensed in order to not go to prison. Um, well. So I'm hoping so you can help me with that. That is not the I'm usual. you can help me with that. That's not the usual pitch that we got. <laughs> <laughs> we have a motion from Mr. I, I will second it. All right. Um, I don't have the, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. Thanks, Pastor. Thank you. Uh, next up, <laughs> approval, change of manager, not your average Joe's, Lauren Dexter. Welcome. Thank you. I uh, read the application. Anything else we should hear? I don't think so. <laughs> Colleagues. <laughs> well, I. I I guess the only thing I'd say is I, I, the same thing we go through every, yeah. every time with changes of managers and new licenses. Uh, uh, presumably, you're, you're very well versed in the uh, um, uh, preventing underage serving Absolutely. and, uh, and yep. such. And yep. We know that in the past there have been some issues, but I think it was several managers ago at this point. Mm -hmm. so, um, so that's really all I have to, have to say. Okay. There. I agree with Joe and second. Thank you. All right, it's a motion from Mr. Carroll. I'm going to push harder on that one, though, okay. and say, uh, um, so you understand that Not Your Average Shows had a serving violation <coughs> um, a couple years ago. I do. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, definitely one of the things we've seen when we see violations is because policies either weren't written. Uh, in your case, I know they were written, but perhaps sorry, I just want to understand. Um, tell me, are you continuing to have, uh, what, what's your new server education like what's the sign off process that you're going through things like that could you share that with me well actually arlington has uh less strict requirements for serve safe certifications for the hourly employees so um my history with not your average joe's has worked in stores that does require that so i kind of just go through that training with every new man and every new server okay and bartender and then what happened are they signing a they're signing a, yeah they're signing off on an alcohol service policy form okay but we just we reiterate it weekly at least um, the penalties and we've had some great examples locally of what can happen so okay, okay. any further discussion uh, move approval all those in favor please say aye 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 three zero thank you very much okay. sure. um, next up um, Marie do we have anybody citizens open forum okay just double checking no one's here here for specifically for citizens open forum Seeing none, moving on. Number 15 is next up. <laughs> so <laughs> number 15, a request one, sp on space, uh, one space on street overnight parking at 35 Addison Street from uh, Dorothy Louise. Ms. Louise, is there, is that, that's you? Yes. Could you come on up yes. to the microphone? And, uh, and so we've read your application. We read the response to it. Uh, could you sh talk, tell us just uh, about, the about your application? Um, well, I have uh, three cars, and there's only two parking spaces. I've been a resident for 20 years. 
I live at the end of the dead end street, so as you go down the, the hill, it, I was noticing why this occurs. The driveways get a little shorter, so because I'm at the bottom, um, there's, uh, there's, the driveway is very short and only room for two cars. And uh, I need a space for a third car. So we're all working. Mm. Thank you. Um, so um, uh, the, the, we, we get these uh, requests frequently, and, and we very rarely approve them. And I am going to uh, recommend or move to not approve um, your request tonight, unfortunately. And we have um, messages here from both the police and fire department recommending that we do not approve um, of this additional parking spot. Uh, I would recommend um, perhaps uh, looking around in the neighborhood and seeing if there could be somewhere that you could rent a spot overnight for the additional car. There uh, really isn't anyone. I mean, I've been there for 20 years. My son is now home from college, which mm. is why there's an additional car. Yeah. There's um, none of my neighbors. They would yeah. probably sign mm. so, uh, something. Ma'am, ma I'll give you a second to weigh in in a minute, but it's, oh. at the moment it's still his turn. Uh, oh, um, I'm sorry. Yeah. No, and uh, but but even in the past, as a, instead of uh, because we did have. Um, a, a referendum on the ballot asking if, if people in Arlington would uh, like overnight parking, and, and it was overwhelmingly voted no. And so I, I think that we have a responsibility to kind of uphold the town's, uh, the, that vote. And, um, you know, even in the past we've had, a, as opposed to uh, if there is an area where someone could even put in an additional driveway, we would recommend extending driveways as opposed to giving out spots mm -hmm. like this. So. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm really sorry, but I'm just not going to be able to support this tonight. Thank well, you. I... Uh, sorry, we, well, we, well, we, all, we all get a crack. I'll, I wanted I'll to reply to his additional You'll state. get a chance in a moment. Okay. Hope Mr. Kira. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to second Mr. Burns' motion, um, and largely for the reasons that he, he described. I mean, I think a number of us were actually kind of interested in exploring uh, kind of a liberalization of the, the on-street parking, and that's why we supported putting... Uh, the ballot measure on a, you know, a number of years ago, overwhelmingly defeated, uh, uh, opening it up. A additionally, the um, the fire department in particular has has written that that having um, uh, cars parked on the street at, at night would potentially impede access to the hydrant and to the lake if they needed access to the lake for for uh, rescues. So, un unfortunately folks in, in this situation have had to find another situation either with a public lot or a private lot or, or a neighbor. I know you said that there are no neighbors who are able to help you in this way, but um, I'm sorry, but I'm gonna, ha I'm gonna be supporting Mr. Burns' motion. Um, I, I'm on the same page, and, and really, and I've, they've said it, but I'll just hit the three points. Uh, one is because it's the town as a body has chosen to follow it. Um, and two is because the town lot, the one by St. Agnes over here is a, a few minutes walk away and there are spaces available there for overnight uh, rent. And uh, the third one is even if we were to permit overnight parking, we wouldn't do it in places that public safety recommended against it and this is one of those places. So unfortunately, I, I'm, I'm gonna also uh, vote no. But now, it's- uh, Now I can speak. Exactly. Okay. I, um First of all, uh, I, I approve. I think safety is very important, and I've been there for a very long time. I've seen fire trucks come up and down the street, so I do not agree with that. Um, there's never been an, a chance or a, an you know, a situation where fire trucks have not been able to access it. I'm really, uh, it's very, it's there's a lot of room. Second of all, having me walk from the town lot home is, uh, I think, um, mm -hmm. not very sensitive or appreciative of me being a person in Arlington for 20 years in my house. I can't park in front of it. My son's home from college. He's looking to park in front of our home. So I feel that's a little insensitive to it. And to put a driveway in, um, is I would have to take down a hundred year old sycamore tree, which is kind of unrealistic too. 
and the other part where the town voted on it. I think if you, there are so many different areas of Arlington. I think to ask the whole town globally is unrealistic. It should be done um, by a neighborhood or section because every neighborhood in Arlington is quite different. I also feel that in coming here, the decision was already made from a conversation I had with the police officer because everything that you all said he had recommended to me and it felt like it was a done deal. I also know that people who have come here, friends, have had parking approved. So um, that's where I am on that. Okay, thank you. Any further comment? No. All those in favor of Mr. Burns, motion seconded by Mr. Kiro, please say aye. 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 Unanimous vote. Thank you for coming, sorry. Next up, Minuteman campaign update, Mr. Ruderman. Welcome. Thank you, members of the board. Good evening. Michael Ruderman. I'm representing Arlington's contingent in the campaign for Minuteman's future. We're working to turn out a vote, a positive vote for Minuteman Regional High School, Arlington's uh, secondary uh, uh, high school for vocational and career technical education. Uh, vote is September 20th, week from tomorrow. It is a um, little unusual in the timing. Uh, polls are open noon to eight, uh, which is different from our customary elections. Uh, this vote is being taken up in the entire school district because of the somewhat arcane rules of the district compact and state law. Uh, in order to borrow money for a, a, a project, the district has to have the unanimous consent of all 16 member towns. <coughs> we got 15. So lacking that 16th uh, yes, uh, the option was to go to a um, uh, direct <coughs> vote of all the residents in the, in the member towns, and that's where we are coming up next Tuesday. All right. Thank you. Questions, <laughs> comments? I don't think there are any questions. I think it just, just bears reminding folks that we, we did have a debt exclusion related to this to, to cover Arlington's share and that two-thirds of those voting um, voted in favor of that. So I hope folks will get out and... That's and right. We had a vote in town meeting that was contingent on a successful vote uh, on the debt exclusion question. The uh, town meeting vote carried by 80%. Uh, the uh, debt exclusion question carried townwide by uh, almost exactly two-thirds. And so we're uh, confident that if we get our supporters out, we'll get a positive vote uh, a week from tomorrow. Excellent. I will also say that um, not only should we get ourselves out to vote on September 20th, but we should call everyone to know in <coughs> Belmont. <laughs> um, because Belmont is indeed the 16th town who we haven't been able to persuade. And um, if we can get this question to pass in Belmont, it's a done deal. And uh, right. even, even if it fails in Belmont, uh, it still might get done. But uh, the, way, the way to get this done for sure is to call your friends in Belmont and say, please vote. Couldn't agree more. On uh, September 20th. Excellent. Uh, any further questions or comment? All right. Um, um, I think that's probably it, then I don't think that's we have all? a formal yes. vote to take. No, thank you very much. Thank you thank for you. coming. Uh, next up, item 18, ADA parking space proposal and recommendation. <coughs> Mr. Town Manager. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, so before the board tonight is um, a recommendation on the ADA space uh, proposal that was put before the board uh, by a working group of the Disabilities Commission back in July. Uh, at that meeting in July, I had asked for a little time for us to do uh, a solicitation of public feedback on the proposal. Uh, we did so, uh, though there, there was not very much public feedback. Uh, there were several emails that were in the board's packet tonight, one from a group of business owners in East Arlington, uh, expressing some concern about the proposal, but also a broader concern about uh, the laws and enforcement of handicapped parking and parking in general in East Arlington, and then several supportive emails uh, from members of the community. Um, reading those emails, uh, giving the proposal further consideration, um, what I have asked the board to consider tonight uh, is what would basically be a phased in or tiered approach, whereby uh, just over half, 14 of the 27 proposed spots would be implemented immediately. Um, we would then, uh, if the board adopted this proposal, perform a utilization review to see how well both the new 
uh, spaces as well as the existing spaces are utilized over a period of time we can define uh, and then come back before the board and so far as there is uh, sufficient utilization of those spots that deems that there should be an expansion approve the further 13 spots for the total 27 uh, and we, we could even do it a year from now um, at the first September meeting um, and the only uh, the only other thing I would add is I I wouldn't want to be the one to pick the 14 recommended so I'd ask the disability if the board does uh, adopt this proposal going back to the Disabilities Commission or to the working group specifically to recommend the top 14 to be implemented um, so that they're in the spots that are at least uh, of the highest priority as designated by the working group okay um, could you oh, sorry um, the, the, yeah <laughs> So I guess I have a question for the manager, uh, but uh, I should ask my colleagues if they have a question for him first. No, the manager just answered my question because I was going to ask how how do you choose that, yeah, that yeah. person, 50%. Yeah. Yeah. I would ask if you could um, uh, talk a, a little bit further about the uh, utilization review that we would undertake. So what we would do is um, with, within existing DPW funds, we would hire an engineering firm to come in. We'd probably do a weekday and a weekend count uh, on all of the spots and actually count the, the amount of time that it was uh, that the spots were actually uh, taken so we would just determine what the actual percentage of utilization was okay thank you and I, I don't know that there's a standard number that we would gauge it by um, but I would gauge that anything demonstrating regular utilization would warrant that uh, considering further expansion would be reasonable okay. thank you very much yeah. you're welcome all right thank you uh, come on up Darcy Devney, Thorndike Street in East Arlington, a volunteer for the Arlington Disability Commission. An adequate number of handicapped parking spaces in the optimal places. It seems like somewhat a simple request and it was one year ago. In January, the Disability Commission voted yes. In March, the Board of Selectmen voted yes to send it to town meeting. In May, town meeting voted yes, 183 to four. Do we need all of the HP spaces that we have asked for? Yes, we do. I'm not gonna bother dragging you through all of the Vision 2020 surveys and the town stats and the state stats yet again, but they all agreed. Arlington currently has only 23 on-street public HP spaces. You've heard this before. Adding 27, all 27, will barely take Arlington up to the minimum 5% recommended by the Massachusetts Office of Disability. We've worked very hard with the business community to optimize placement, and our plan reflects that. Uh, as for that single negative email from the Capitol Square, we were aware of that issue. Um, we believe we have a solution, and I can show you the diagrams, acceptable to all concerned. I'm worried that people with disabilities are going to end up as scapegoats for the loss of parking in East Arlington that was caused by the Mass Ave project. That's not fair, and I hope you, sh you, you can make sure that that doesn't happen. A utilization study, I could go into some detail, but it would be pointless and a waste of town resources because of the way handicapped spaces work, which you might not know if you're not a handicapped person. Any specific HP space is a very local resource. A study of whether a particular HP space is utilized or for how long doesn't tell you anything about whether an HP space is needed a block away. It doesn't actually tell you whether that's a useful HP spot or not because as I've explained before, it is currently sort of the, the moral idea of an HP space for most people who have those <coughs> placards is to not use it unless they have to. That is, unless there is no other space they can take because they want to leave it for another handicapped person who might need it more. Therefore, it is the very scarcity of HP spaces that makes them somewhat underutilized because people don't want to. They want someone else who's handicapped to have them. If there were plenty of them, people would use them all the time. But they don't because they don't want someone else being denied the opportunity of a space. When I said that HP space is a block apart, I'm, 
I'm going to say again, a person with mobility problems doesn't necessarily have the option of walking that block. That is why we have been so careful about the placement, and that is why we need them. And again, that doesn't get us to the minimum that the Massachusetts Office of Disability recommends, that the ADA, in essence, recommends. You know, when I was doing the original map for this project, Adam Kurowski, the MAP GIS director, said, you know, wow, you really do know every handicapped space in Arlington? And I realized that I did, because that is my Arlington as a disabled person. Then when we drove around to consider new spots, I realized how much of Arlington isn't in my mental Arlington map anymore. I've been to Retroburger once, and that is because of handicapped parking. I've missed meetings at town hall because I can't find a parking space. How would a utilization study capture the missed opportunities, the lunches with friends that don't happen, the library books that don't get taken out, and the volunteers that can't volunteer? Disabled people won't come where they aren't welcomed, and they can't come if you don't provide the legally required access. It isn't a case of waiting yet another year to see if handicapped people want to shop and visit and be contributing citizens of Arlington and then putting in HP spaces. As we have explained from the first, they can't come until they are there. And I'm really very disappointed that it has taken this long and that we are at this board again asking for something that's been said yes to so many times. I don't understand the difficulty here, honestly, as a disabled person. And I hate to say you should walk in my shoes, but you should limp in my shoes. And then you might understand. Thank you. I am Cynthia DeAngelis. I'm the chair of this. Again, we've, we've talked. Um, so I just got the message that this was occurring tonight, which in itself is about as aggravating as it can get because I had a full house of people and I was in little shorts and I said, okay, I'll be there in 10 minutes because I didn't know. And I have a lot of respect for you. Um, I really do. And I think we all work very, very closely together and I've enjoyed every minute of it, but I respectfully very much disagree and I'm very upset by this proposal because I feel like it's like changing the rules in the middle of the game. We, we did every single thing you asked and more. I gave up every, not that I'm a martyr, trust me, that's because it was important. I gave up every single weekend in June in that 80 and 90 degree weather to walk Mass Ave and talk to everybody in, in <laughs> the whole town. Everybody knows. In fact, even today I was talking about it at Dunkin' Donuts and one of the police officers said to me, yeah, I saw you. Good for you. He said, we need those spaces. And I thought, and then all of a sudden, I get this email from Darcy and the commission all trying to scramble to get people here tonight. I, I'm not a fan of people changing rules on me. I feel like we, we respectfully did every single thing you wanted. We collected data. We went to the um, registration. We, uh, you know, we, we've come here three different times. And we were assured. And you can look back, because I watched it tonight. We were assured that this was not a big deal, that you were going to vet it, which we did. You got one group of people that said, we got a couple of questions. You got nothing. <clears throat> nothing. We got the whole of Mass Ave saying yes. And, and with people that didn't say yes, we came to a, 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 a resolution with the, the next person or two down, and they came into agreement. So to tell us at this juncture, we're gonna wait another year after it's, we've done all this with you folks, I just feel like, for me, I'm a volunteer, and I wanna play by rules, right? I mean, that's what you want us here for, is to work and represent the community. So um, I, I just feel like, um, it, I'm, I'm, I, I don't, I'm speechless, and I'm never speechless about this stuff. Um, I work with handicapped kids my whole life. I, I, this is all I do. And this is all we talk about all the time, is access to a community. And I want my Arlington to be accessible to everybody. And everybody welcomed us with open arms. That's why you didn't get anybody saying no. 
So um, to tell us another year, I, I, I probably am gonna try to get back here with the commission in some way. I just would really ask you with all the respect to, to just think about it because you've sent <coughs> us away a couple of times and asked us to come back and do something else. And we have. <coughs> so there's really, I, I don't know what else I could do short of having everybody come to my house. So, you know, uh, the whole town. Um, I did think about getting a thousand signatures at town day and walking up and down and asking everybody to sign it. But, I, I, you know, um, our hope was, to be honest with you, we have town day all prepared with big maps about, look at what we did. It's all ready for town day to say, look at what we accomplished as a handicapped commission. And just kind of, I feel like we're getting slammed. So I'm just going to be honest with you. Okay. Anyway, I was the emotional end. Sorry. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, Adam. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I, I completely understand the frustration. And I, I appreciate Cynthia's remarks. And I equally respect her. I, I, I do feel like from the end of your remarks, I want to make sure, and I know you feel rushed into this, that my proposal is not none. It's implement more than 50% of what was requested immediately. So I, I don't okay. feel like, say, say that again. So I, I feel like, and I, I'm sorry. I, I, I want to just, I, I want to, I want to, I want to try to make this as just as, as much a statement of fact as possible. A good portion of my concern, and this is not at all meant in, it could come off as accusatory and it's not meant to be. When the group, when, when you were both before the board in July, it was, basically stated or put forth before the board that the business community was in 100% support. Mm -hmm. We talked about soliciting feedback. Mm -hmm. Before I even solicited that feedback, four of the most prominent members of the East Arlington business community wrote me with grave concerns about the proposal. So that instantly justified the concern I had that the community didn't, was not aware that this was happening. And basically that is the, the basis for my recommendation is that we're not, we're not ignoring the request at all. We're taking a first step, which I, th I would say is a very significant step, seeing how the community reacts, and then being able to take the, the final step next year. That, that's, that's the basis for my, for my recommendation. I'm sorry, ma'am. It's, it's really important that we only let the people talk when they're at the microphone, when they're called on. Thank you very much. Please. Robert Kuhn, 110 Thorndike Street. The reason that the town manager got that letter so soon was because those people had all been informed by the commission and encouraged to express their views. They have one problem with one owner of a property who takes up a space because she's handicapped all day. That's, in a nutshell, their problem. That's actually, yeah. It is my turn to speak, sir. Please, keep going. That was very rude. Please, address us. I'm sorry, I've lost my train of thought because of the town manager. We have gone back to those people and talked to them. We've talked to the person they were concerned about. We have a solution for that issue. There was one complaint that the town manager has received, signed by four people. We've resolved that. And yet he, he acts like this is a grant proposal that we've added 50 per, uh, doubled the amount and he's cutting back the grant by 50% because that's really all they need. Which goes against what the town voted for. It goes against what the Mass Disability Office recommends for towns. It goes against common sense because a utilization study will not tell you what the utilization is going to be for a handicapped space somewhere else. So it's wasting town resources on what is the town manager's gut feeling that handicapped people
don't need that many spaces. What it amounts to is not evidence that the town manager has brought before you, but his gut feeling going against all the statistics, all the evidence, all of the work done by the committee. Thank you. Thank you. Are there other members here who wanted to, uh, in the audience who wanted to speak to this issue? So, Mr. Carroll. I, I had a question for the last speaker. You referenced a specific issue and a solution that was, that was <coughs> reached. Could you get more specific about that? Or? If somebody else can answer it better, that's fine. But if you're the right yeah. per no, I can do the diagram. Okay. Thank you. I can explain it. Thank you. Tarsi Devney again. I can explain it Appreciate fairly it. straightforwardly. We knew that this existed. We had talked to them in our original walk shop about it. Um, how do I put this? Remember how I said that for handicapped people, they always leave a handicapped space empty? Okay. What's going on in that block? I thought that you would have been given the emails by the town manager, but I guess you didn't. What's going on in that block is, in essence, that there is, uh, there used to be nine spaces between Restaurant Olivio and Fox Library, and now there are six. Of those six, one is a handicapped <coughs> space. The person who works there as an employee and is handicapped in that block, which is an issue we had in some other parts of town, and we've resolved it in a different way in each part because the employee was part-time or because of other spaces nearby. So it's not that it's, it's a new issue to have people who need handicapped spaces all day because they're employed. They are now in the community working, which is the point of having that kind of access. So, but they're convinced that they should be leaving it for someone else because there aren't enough handicapped parking spaces. So, also, the one that's in, uh, it's right in front of, I think it's Tony's Barbershop, except that's moved. The handicapped space was put in right behind a bump out, which as we've explained before, I think, boringly enough, is a bad idea for several reasons, including that it, it is one of the hardest spaces to park in especially if you don't have enough flexibility. And it is next to street furniture, so you can't get out on the side. So in fact, I would grade <coughs> it as kind of a D as a handicapped space. So we're moving that back to where it was in front of the Fox Library accessible door. We're also putting another handicapped space around the corner so that there are two handicapped spaces there. The employee can use one of them, and that will still leave one for public use. There's still going to be a shortage of parking spaces in East Arlington, but that particular issue is really someone trying to be generous in case someone is more handicapped than they are like some of their customers, who are, in this case, more handicapped than they are. So once we've provided enough handicapped spaces, so we're adding, as you can see, one handicapped space right in front of the Fox. We've done all this measuring of Cleveland Street. We can add a handicapped space there, and we can add an extra non-handicapped space. So we will be adding two spaces, and only one of them will be HP, but that will give us sufficient for the employee who works there and it is an accessible issue. The commission talked about, because we knew this problem existed, as I said, in several different sort of permutations, um, having some kind of request possibility so that now people can ask for their employees to have a handicapped space nearby um, and do that on a sort of case-by-case -case basis once we've got the town up to that minimum 5%, see how that's working. But I don't think that that is a reason to either reduce the other number of handicapped spaces by 50% or to halt the program for another year. I, I just don't understand that. It's a very specific, as I said, although it's a, an issue that comes up in a couple of different ways along that business corridor, it can be solved in different ways. And in this case, that is the best solution we have 
for East Arlington. If we had known about these problems when the East Arlington parking was getting decided, perhaps we could have had a better solution than we now have, but we are working with what we have. Okay. All right, I'm gonna thank you for your answer. Um, I'm good. So actually, I'm, I gave the, the chair to Joe, and Joe asked a question and he got his answer. So I'm gonna keep going back to Joe, but I'm gonna come back to you afterwards. Okay. Joe. Is it still me? Or? I, I, I just wanna give some, some impressions of, of where I feel like we are. Um, I do agree that we, we discussed this at length and town meeting discussed this at, at length. And really, the, the, the um, issues that were registered were, with us were from, you know, Capitol Square, and it's a pretty, it's a distinct, you know, several blocks of, of businesses. It feels to me, and I don't, I don't know, maybe there are some other considerations, maybe there are scheduling considerations, I don't know, that weren't, weren't referenced. It feels to me like I, I'm not seeing right now, um, um, unless the, the, there's something that's, that, 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 that's escaping me, that, that there's no reason not to proceed with the program for the other parts of the town, both west and east of those distinct blocks that are encompassed by, by these, these businesses, but that it then probably warrants um, a consultation between the Manager of Disabilities Commission and the Capital Square Business Association to find a solution for that partic those particular blocks, rather than just saying, well, we're gonna, we're gonna implement the program at 50%. There's, there's actually a very discreet area that, that, was, that, was, that was brought to our attention by, by the, the businesses, and that's, that's kind of where my head is at right, right now from, from what we've heard so far. We don't have representatives of Capital Square here, so I don't, it's hard to. You mind if I go Yeah, please. This? Uh, come on up. Um, just to help with this a little. Sorry, I was, uh, could you introduce yourself? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Michael Defney. Thank you. Uh, I am a volunteer, I think, officially for now. For the, yeah. <laughs> um, I went through many of the stores up and down Mass Ave also. Uh, I do want to say, re relative to backing Darcy up, uh, we had a, at least a 35-minute, if not 40-minute conversation, I think, on Saturday or last week. Um, with the lady who I believe is uh, the one the manager is concerned about. Um, and we went over very carefully with the maps and how she would use it or how she wouldn't, et cetera. So um, I can back up. Darcy did, in fact, uh, from what little she had learned, I guess, from the manager, uh, gone and uh, tried to resolve and make everybody as happy as possible on Mass App, which um, is, of course, a concern. You know, you don't want to... Um, be unkind to your um, people, what do you call it, the uh, people who own stores. They've gone through a lot during the um, renovations. They all lost the money, I'm sure. The money didn't come in. But let me say, we definitely went with that lady and for half an hour, 45 minutes. So. Okay. Um, sure. Well, you don't have to. Um, yeah, I, I do. Please. Um, I, um, I actually think a phased-in approach is very fair. Um, I think that doing a 50% phase-in right now and having a um, utilization study um, and having, you know, I think uh, more town staff look at it is, is a very reasonable strategy. And, uh, and I understand, um, you know, that you vehemently disagree with me. Um, and I, I'm not trying to take away from the work that you did or the importance of these spots. But, but I do think that this is a reasonable approach that was set forth, and I, um, I'm, I'm going to support it. So thank you. I was, um, my thoughts are that we're talking, it feels, I think what we're talking about is, on a broad, like taking a step back, what we're talking about is the pace of implementation of a change. We're not talking, um, uh, because the proposal the town manager is making is to increase the number of uh, handicap spaces in town by, you know, 60 odd percent or, wh or whatever it is. Uh, and the people who are with us tonight advocating are, are advocating for a faster pace to that change. So we're definitely talking, and I, I think that that's a fair description of, of, of what we're talking about. And I think that there is a nuance here. Uh, I'll come back, I'll come back here to the big, uh, for a second then. There is a nuance here that is, um, 
the, the maybe geolocationable that doesn't like permit the perhaps, uh, I think Joe's point is, is that there's parts of place that we could perhaps move faster than others. But even still, I think we're, it's, it's, it's about pace. Um, Adam, do you think that's, I'm, I'm gonna put you on the spot a little bit and I'm gonna say, uh, could you tell me more about, it, first of all, do you think I'm talking about pace as the right way to describe it? Can you, can you tell me more about why you're recommending this particular pace? Yeah, you know, it, it's, you just said more articulately, and I probably should have led with that, that to, to a great degree, my overarching analysis of this has been give people change at the pace they can digest it. And my concern has been that if 27 new ADA spots were along the avenue in Broadway overnight, that people who don't, you know, don't take the active uh, sort of approach to pay attention to these discussions that we have here um, would be very surprised that these that this happened. Um, and that was my concern, that there would be an undue backlash against the Disabilities Commission in the town for making such what could be deemed a drastic change. So you, you said it still better than I just said it in terms of trying to moderate the pace of change. Okay. Um, can I 50%, 60%, 75%? No, I don't. There's 50% there's, there's is a smooth number to, if there had been 28 spots, I still would have said 14. Yeah, I tried, tried to find a middle ground. Okay. So I saw you shook your head when I said it's not about pa when, I, when I said it's about pace. What you're missing is the town manager's insistence on a utilization study, implying that uh, some of the spaces might not be created. That's the only reason for doing a utilization study to to uh, block what the towns voted for, what the board of selectmen have. Uh, voted for. So, um, no, it is not just about pace. And of course it's not overnight. Of course, the, the DPW can't spend, you know, one night putting in 28 spaces. They're going to do it over a period of time, but they could do it over the fall. And the, 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 the argument that the town can't digest it is spurious. People, the, the businesses care about their couple of blocks. So if it's there, they may care about it and they don't care about the one. So, so it's, it's going to have, that, that, it's a spurious argument. The number 14 is, if, if the town manager had thought about it at all, he would have said 18, the, uh, the number of primary spaces as opposed to the secondary spaces. But he just cut the number in half, just like grant proposal, they really don't need all that money, cut it in half. It's an absurd number. I think that we really have to watch our tone at this meeting right now. Yeah. I would, I would so, like okay. an opportunity. Can I yeah, actually, no, I will say, so um, I will say that we do have to be careful about why attributing motives and in, in, in statements and things like, uh, uh, like that. And so, um, so keeping, yeah, ke keeping, yes. on the, keeping to the, mm -hmm. the salient facts, mm -hmm. please. Well, actually, I had a, maybe a question and maybe a solution. Because I'm one of these people, you interviewed me. Yeah, yeah, said, yeah, yeah. What do you like you, to do? All right. Said, yeah. right. And you also, in particular, need to stay near the microphone. You, okay. You, so you wander, which I'm is I'm trying fun. to figure out how Right, I'm into win-win. Like we got to figure this out together, maybe tonight, and say. So what I think I, I don't understand is, and maybe we didn't think about this together well enough, is that the rolling out. So, personally, I think the study. You know, I just think it's kind of a waste of time. But we could talk about that. Mm -hmm. The piece I'm more concerned about is it's not overnight. But maybe we should think about uh, 30, 30, 30 percent and 20, or something that makes it over some time, because I get what you're saying, but it's also really the DPW I haven't talked to them about this, by the way, but I'm, I, I'm trying to figure out a way that we can all work together so that we're not all at each other, because I think we all want the same thing, otherwise you wouldn't have said yes three times, right? Um, so if we could figure out a rollout phase, I think that might be where we're disconnecting right now. Because we're thinking, I think if I were to ask you two, you'd say, okay, it's, it's past a year for the next group. 
and I think we're thinking that's too long, too far. for the necessity of the handicapped spaces. So if we could figure out something together, I don't know if you, if you want to do it now or we just meet, and then maybe I know I hate to say the next meeting you're going to see me again, but we we figured that piece out so that we come to some kind of a agreement. Yeah, I don't I, know if that sounds. I'm uh, actually may I Mr. please. Chair? Um, I'm, I'm actually completely open to that, and I believe you're, the commission meets next Wednesday, the 21st? Correct. Set? And I, I was already planning on attending uh, to, to discuss the wh whatever the aftermath of this discussion would yeah, be. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so having that opportunity to yeah. work in a collaborative fashion with the commission, I would absolutely be welcome I to. Think be, and Michael will be there. From, yeah, so yeah. Mike Rademacher is there. So it's like you've got all your, your players in one, and even though I'm not a fan of saying, can we pause this, I feel like the emotions are too high and we need to like, strategically think about what we're fighting. And I don't think we're that far off. I just think we need, a, we need to be able to feel comfortable, all of us together, on a reasonable start date and then a target date for the end. Does that? Well, I'll see if we're, uh, Joe, thoughts? I think that makes eminent sense. I'd like to move to request that the town man, well, I don't even think we have to move it. You, you've already offered it. But okay. If we want to go on record as, as requesting that the town manager work with the Disabilities Commission and um, some of the other stakeholders to find a yeah. reasonable uh, rollout, um, to find a reasonable rollout plan for this, uh, this program, I think that that would be. Okay, so we have okay. our first motion. Um, so, uh, if, if, you know, I, I will support that, but, but one thing I do think that has to be considered throughout these discussions, uh, and, and I think that we, we, no one is trying to say that handicapped parking spots are, are not important. I know that no one in this room thinks that, and um, that's just, you know, that, that's off the table. Um, but, but what we do have to consider is what if after there are 27 new parking spots, which is, I mean, no one can disagree either. I think that that's not a lot of new parking spots. That mm -hmm. is doubling the amount of handicapped mm -hmm. spots. That, that is, uh, that's a big change. It, it really is. Um, so what is going to happen if, if there are, um, you know, if there's a groundswell of opponents after the implementation? And, and how are we going to work with them? Mm -hmm. and, and as long as that is part of this discussion mm -hmm. uh, moving forward, uh, I will support Joe's. Because that, I do think there's a chance that will happen. And, um, and, you know, I don't think it will be fair just to throw those concerns by the wayside. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so that's, you know, I, I hope that's part of the dialogue moving forward. And I, I do think it's important. And I, I think I actually made the last motion. And it, I, um, at the last time this was um, to discuss at this meeting, and I made it very clearly to say that we are not, you know, rubber stamping this project when Correct. we, and, that, and this is why. And so I, I think that it, it's an unfair characterization to say that, you know, we, that this was rubber stamped at our last um, meeting. Um, and, and I do understand the 5% um, of parking. My understanding is that 5% is not actually legally mandated. Um, yes. it, it's, a recommend, it's a recommendation. It might, it, it's, recommend, it's a recommendation. It's a recommendation, right? So it's not law right yet? It's, it's not mandated, as you said. So it I, doesn't have a percentage. It talks about, in essence, that it's supposed to be like the national ADA. There have been court cases where citizens have sued on this exact part of the ADA, mm -hmm. and they have won because it is a public access issue. Okay. Massachusetts, as Mike Rademacher told you in one of the many things that we did, so, was, okay, so was, was and, is and, working and on getting this into a state law. I'm okay. going to try to, I'm sorry, I'm, it's still Steve's floor, and so I'm yeah. going to try sorry. to bring him back. Yeah. I thought you were, yeah. I no, thought you were done. No, I, I, that was a, it, it was a question that I had, and, uh, and I think that it, it's more, I think it, it could be, it's a, to clarify and set a direction for where this conversation is going to go, because it obviously can't go the way that it went tonight. Um, so I, I think that we have to, you know, have an understanding of where, where, you know, how we are going to continue to, you know, make progress here. Because I, I think the tone, um, particularly when we all are trying to make Arlington the best 
quickly as you know, possible. Um, tonight, we, I hope that we take a different direction to it. So I will support Joe's motion, but I, I really hope that um, those, that's considered moving forward. Uh, Can I throw in one more comment? It's not, it's yep. not, I don't want to amend the motion, but I do want to say that if the, if the idea of utilization study you know, is brought back again. I'd like to understand it a little bit more because I'm thinking back to earlier items tonight on, on the agenda and I know that we had that concern when we discussed the one-way uh, road on, on Thompson. How would we measure it? So we want to know what that really means, utilization study. And I'm also thinking of actually <laughs> the question I asked of the RCN about um, uh, busy signals yeah, and how, how do we measure those that never get, never get through. So that, it's something I just would want to understand better, I think, if, if, if part of the rollout plan does include that, that as, as a component. That's fair. Yeah. Um, I had a couple <clears> thoughts. <throat> One is really not related to the very specific issue, but it, or to the specific decision. But uh, Darcy, it's actually it's related to something that you said, which is um, I w one of the, you said that you're concerned that it was a that, that this could be like about scape, scapegoating the disabled disabled community or, or something along those. There's a sentence along those lines, mm -hmm. and I, I want to say that I definitely to me this I do not believe endorse that. I don't believe it. I'm sure that there's someone out there who thinks that's true, but there are people who think a lot of crazy things. Um, to me, this is a conversation about allocating a scarce resource, and it is it is a scarce resource and it's a shared resource and it's something that. Um, every single selectman's meeting, one way or another, we're talking about advocating the parking as a scarce resource, and it is a very difficult conversation, and that's what we're talking about, in, in my mind. It's not about scapegoating or anything like that. Um, my second thought was that uh, I really respect the work that the disabled, uh, the disab excuse me, the Disability Commission has done on this project, and I really appreciate the, um, the data and the passion that you brought, because you brought both of them to it. Um, but I also want to be really clear that um, I respect the town manager a lot to be the, um, to listen to all parties, not, the, you know, and some of them, uh, and so in a, in a lot of this I'm going to end up deferring to what his, uh, to what his uh, recommendations are. And I just wanted to share that because I understand that uh, we're asking the town manager to go, you know, to, to, to go look at it again. But I also want to say, uh, odds are I'm going to probably re agree with uh, where he where he comes out, having listened very carefully to uh, everything that you've said. So we've got a motion on the table to um, mm -hmm. essentially postpone. And, and, to, and to bring it back for a future meeting. The town manager has indicated that he wants to talk at a future disability uh, commission and, and will come back with a future <coughs> proposal. So having said that, are there any final brief remarks? Please, yeah. by the microphone, please. Uh, no, nope, sorry, oh. stand by the microphone. <coughs> no, you, you can talk, you have to be by the microphone. <laughs> I'm really tired, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, I just want to thank you, okay? I, I, I am the chair of this commission and it has never, been discussed that we ever thought that you or any of you were unfair in this process. So, but I want to make that clear to the general public that might be listening and thinking somehow other things have been going on. It hasn't. I appreciate that. So, Thank you. Um, I just want to be clear about that. Thank you very much. That's very, I appreciate that. I, I just need you to say that thing again about that your, your, um, Fallback is to go with what the town manager recommends. It isn't fallback. Um, it is my it, it is my tendency. I, so in or not even tendency. It's my um, what I having heard everything so far and the, the, from the, the from your from your group and from the town manager and from any from anyone else uh, is that it, in most issues I trust the town manager a lot and so I'm trying to give him a little guidance and a little bit. One of the things we do we manage the town manager and I and so as a manager of the town manager I give him feedback and one of the things I say sometimes I talk to him privately and I talk to him publicly. In this case I'm saying publicly I'm you know I, uh, I respect your judgment and I rec respect the fact that he's listening to multiple parties not just some uh, not and I say like multiple parties across the town and I respect his ability to come up with a solution that is, um, fits that you look perplexed well I, I guess what I'm saying is 
I, I hate to drag in another issue, but when I came to you about the parks and recs, it was we let them do what they think is best. And when I come to you as a disability person with working with the commission and we say, this is what we think is best, I get a, yeah. The so I, I don't understand the, the dichotomy I get, there. I can explain that very easily. Uh, the town manager reports to this board. Yes. Parks and recommendation Rex does not. Okay. So it's a very uh, like one of these things I have one of these things I am a, a manager of and one of them I am not. Okay. Um, and do you have a timeline in mind for these decisions to be made if you are telling us that there is going to be so some our, amount of so our next meeting is september 26th and if the meeting on the 21st go your meeting on the 21st you reach a solution i don't see any reason why it couldn't be on that agenda and if for some reason at that 21st meeting you or the town manager or the in particular uh, the town manager thinks that he needs more time then he would he would get it so let's target September 26th, but that's okay. We have a motion. Is there any further discussion? No. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Three zero. Postponed. Thank you. Thank you all for your time. Thank you. All right. Next up, we have nothing except for new business. New business. New business. So I'm going to give it just a second for. Uh, Yes, would you like me to go, Mr. Dunn? Councilor Hyam. Uh, just uh, as the board is aware, um, we received a, uh, the comprehensive permit application for the new guard development site, uh, and there are a lot of conversations that are happening about making sure that the Zoning Board of Appeals is appropriately resourced, that uh, the town you know, presents them with clear and consistent information. Um, uh, we also, uh, a somewhat different but also important matter, uh, the board may be aware that uh, the, there's been some ambiguity recently from the state on the rules that it wants us to follow for a registered marijuana dispensary. So that is also a matter of, of, of concern. And uh, while we have a special town meeting warrant article that may or may not resolve that issue, um, it continues to be something that my office is working very, very hard on to prioritize uh, those two issues for, for the town. Thank you. All right. Mrs. Kropelka. But because ACMI asked me to, could you please take the microphone from Doug? <laughs> Two things. First of all, I need your approval. Did you have a chance over the weekend to look at the warrant? I have to be at the printer with it on Thursday. I did not. Sorry. So if you look at it, just look at it and you can call me tomorrow and then I'll, I'll send it out. Okay. And that's on the warrant. Can I, can I just uh, clarify that for a second? If anybody has any individual concerns about the warrant, the selectmen don't need to vote on the warrant per se. Um, you know, it's, it's usually nice if you do, but the warrant's opened, articles were submitted and closed, and we'll be uh, doing our best to provide you not only with the um, background information on each of these articles, but if possible, and if the selectmen are so amenable, um, a uh, uh, some kind of vague draft vote so the selectmen don't have to convene another time before the special town meeting. Okay. My second thing, Friday night, as you all know, is town night, and that's going to start at 5 if you'd like to get down and join us, and then town day starts at 9 this year, <coughs> and the selectmen, God bless you, the selectmen are going to have welcoming remarks at 9 o'clock. All right. Out front. And I hope to see you all here. And the weather's going to be amazing. It's going to be beautiful. <laughs> it better be. <laughs> and that's it. Thank you, Marie. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, just two brief pieces of new business. Uh, first, last week I was joined by um, both Selectman Byrne and Selectman Kiro uh, with the Lieutenant Governor coming to town for the official signing of the town's community compact. Uh, so along with the three of us and the Lieutenant Governor, we had a, a multiple town staff from both DPW, planning, and IT, and it was, it was a nice event. The Lieutenant Governor was here for about a half an hour, but it was nice to be able to talk a little bit about Arlington, and though we've already been working on those projects that were outlined in the Community Compact, it was a nice sort of culmination to actually being able to uh, have Mr. Kiro sign over Chair Mahan's name uh, on the uh, Community Compact document, but it was a very I nice event. I told her there'd be a clean one coming. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and the second thing is I... Uh, 
was able to run in the Council on Aging, the Friends of the Council on Aging race yesterday, uh, nice. pushing, my, pushing my daughter in a stroller for the first time <laughs> as, the, as the heavens opened up with rain and wind in the middle of the race and had me on the bike path with my town manager hat on thinking, God, I hope a tree doesn't fall right now with all these people running on the bike path. <laughs> Uh, but it seemed to me um, like an overwhelming success. I didn't hear any final numbers, but it seemed like a great turnout. Uh, you know, just a lot of smiling and happy faces. And someone running in the 80-plus uh, division finished for the second year in a row uh, to just broad and raucous applause. So it was a nice, uh, nice part of the race. Nice. Thank that's, you. Uh, that's all I have. You're welcome. That's amazing. Um, let's see what I have. Oh, I thank everyone who worked on the elections uh, yeah. last week particularly uh, the selectman's office, clerk's office, and all of our uh, new election workers. So um, my understanding is it went well, although lightly attended. But um, <coughs> that's nothing that the people who dedicate all their time can adjust. So thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I guess on that note, um, with elections, of course, those same workers will be coming back out again next Wednesday and coming mm -hmm. back out again for um, uh, November Tuesday. 8th, but also I think it's, in, what's that? Tuesday. 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 Tuesday, not Wednesday. Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah. Sorry. Keep Rewind. Going. <laughs> keep going. Sorry. Rewind. November 8th. And um, I, I do know that um, for the presidential election this year, and, and maybe Ms. Kropelka maybe fell us in with more uh, specifics, but uh, we will have early voting now as being instituted in the Commonwealth this year for. Um, uh, for the election, including, I believe, one Saturday. We're going to do it from October 24th through November 4th, except for Sunday. And on the 29th, which is a Saturday, we're going to do it from 9 to 5 p.m. So it will be every day, Monday through Friday, regular town hall hours, Saturday from 9 to 5. And then the following Monday, which is the 4th, or is it Monday or Tuesday is the fourth until uh, four o'clock? Yeah, so that's all days. at the town hall, though, not right at your own town hall. polling right. place for right. early, okay. early voting. I think that's great. Um, and my understanding is we got support from the Secretary of State's office for some of that. So we'll um, get joke on. by having it opened on Saturday. The Secretary of State's office is going to reimburse us two thousand dollars. That's great. Great. Fantastic. And I also just had a question. I, I see we do have um, an audit report here on some accounts. Is this a matter that's being brought before the audit subcommittee or? Um, just to get our information now and then people come in. Well, do you want to tell Yeah, so, um, you know, I, I think it would be fair to bring it before the audit advisory committee, maybe the next time uh, we meet later in the year. Um, I do think the comptroller will come back before the board. Uh, perhaps at that time, the board should formally receive it. And I know uh, Chair Mahan did have a conversation with me prior to the meeting suggesting that we do schedule some post follow-up uh, or even a post report uh, after a year's time to see if the improvements suggested are made. So yeah, I, I just noticed it, so I haven't had a chance to read it, but I was just... Yeah, perhaps curious. we should add it as a future agenda item too yeah. to discuss it. Okay. Thank you. That's it. Um, vote September 20th between noon and 8 p.m. And if you can't do it, please vote absentee. Any do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. No, that, let's stick around. <laughs> Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 We're adjourned.